scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. There are many songs by the grace of God that we have received in this place, but there's just a strange anointing upon this song. It's, it's like a call and response. It compels something within you to respond to the heavens. I've tried and tried to stop singing this song, but it will not leave. It's a chant in the spirit. It does something to my spirit. It does something to my spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Worship team. This is the part I like. One more time, all the instruments, our voices, and our hands lifted. Yeah. Help me worship team. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy. Just the voices. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy. Worthy is the Lamb. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah.
get into a prayer tonight and cry for a visitation. Lord, I have come to feast at your table. I have come to feast at your table. We have come to draw strength tonight. Strength for the journey ahead. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, we ask you tonight, invade our lives. Do something remarkable in our lives tonight. Turn our lives around. Turn our lives around. Turn our lives around. Turn our lives around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. Good evening, everyone. Your life will never be the same. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I welcome everyone once again. We have a lot to do tonight. And we're trusting God to be able to go so far. Every moment in his presence. Let me tell you one of the reasons why the presence of God should be greatly desired. In his presence, there is not only liberty. In his presence, there is wisdom. In his presence, there is understanding. It's in his presence he reveals to us the mystery behind the happenings in our lives. And he shows us the system. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Apologize for that. Praise the Lord. Tonight's teaching is going to bless us in no small way. I like our hearts to really, really be opened. The Lord wants to speak to us by the power of his spirit. Hallelujah. The Lord put something in my spirit that I'd like us to write down that I think will be very important and it will set the pace tonight. Um, there are so many people outside. As we always say, you are part of us. And um, I know that the Lord brought you to bless you. And do not let distance distract you. I see people standing with something to write. I want you to know we really appreciate the sacrifice. And um, this that you are doing will speak in your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. You see, when God gave man the mandate to dominate the word dominion means sovereign control sovereign control and every religion every movement promises one thing dominion the fear of man has been his inability to completely control certain situations and circumstances please i want you to listen the things we cannot control are the things that bring fear to our lives so people fear poverty for instance because of um, an effect it seems to be able to bring to our lives and we cannot do anything about it we fear death we fear guns because we think they can do something to us we fear failure because it does something to us. Every time man is unable to control a process, it brings fear, it brings a sense of subjugation. So every movement that has come through history and civilization promises to lead man to a pathway where we'll be able to access dominion. 
but we know that there is no true dominion and authority outside of Christ in Genesis 1 26 the Bible says and Elohim said let us make man in our own image it says let them have sovereign control dominion hallelujah what what is happening to you here every time is the process that will bring you into true dominion I told us again and again that dominion is not a wish dominion is not an impartation dominion is a reaction something happens to your life that leads to an end called dominion hallelujah write this down something I do not know is responsible for the limitation in my life write this down something I do not know is responsible for the limitation in my life something i do not know is responsible i said for you to write it this way so that every time you are reading it you can personalize it and it can create the effect that will birth change something i do not know is responsible for the limitation in my life The second thing I want you to write is this. Something I am aware of but have not believed is also responsible for my limitation. Something I am aware of but have not believed is responsible for my limitation. There is something I am aware of. There is an information, a revelation I am aware of. I'm not ignorant of it. I'm aware of it. But my refusal to believe it has brought limitation to my life. Number three. Something I have believed but have not consistently acted upon is also responsible for my limitation. Something I have believed but have not consistently acted upon underline consistently acted upon something i have believed but have not consistently acted upon is also responsible for my limitation these three factors have limited us in no small way something we do not know is responsible for the limitations in our lives two something we know and information we have come across but we have not chosen to believe is also responsible for the limitations in our lives number three something we have believed but have not consistently it may be that you have acted upon it but you have not consistently acted upon. See, the danger is that any of these three categories will produce the same result. See how frustrating it is. Are we together now? So, we have three people here. One who is completely ignorant and he's not even aware he's ignorant. His miracle starts when he's aware that he's ignorant. Not even when the solution comes. The awareness that you need help is already deliverance in itself let me tell you how satan destroys people he keeps you in ignorance are we together now and he closes every door that can even make you aware you are ignorant that's the first person his end is predictable number two is the one who is is not ignorant he's had access to the information that can change him or her but the person has refused to believe you see i found out that it's not what you hear that changes you it's what you choose to believe and live by so this person here has all the information has read all the books has gone for all the seminars comes for koinonia every week and you will think that he would produce certain kinds of results right the third person not only is not ignorant not only has believed but has refused to consistently act 
Now, the terrible thing is, you would think the first two should be better than the first person, but their results will all come out the same. Hallelujah. That's why the interesting thing about God is when you start working with him, you have to go all the way to see your progress. You can't take two steps with God and expect you will see any remarkable progress. You've, had, you, you've got to go all the way and then you'll see that there is progress. Tonight, I want to teach on strategic kingdom influence. Strategic kingdom influence. This teaching will bless you. It will change your life strategic kingdom influence i want to teach us a major tool for kingdom advancement in the 21st century strategic kingdom influence one of the please look up especially those of us who are pastors ministries fellowships and groups i think i was uh, i don't know if it was the school of ministry students we were having a discussion yesterday and I was telling them, a true shepherd, listen, please. A true shepherd must build people intentionally. There's no lecturer who comes to the lecture hall guessing what he thinks the students should become. Are we together? Every the students don't even know what they should become many times. A few may know. But the lecturer is only a lecturer because he is privy to an information he knows what the students should become if they diligently stay under his tutelage when jesus came he knew what he wanted the disciples to become he wanted them to become apostles envoys advocates of his ideology and he knew exactly what to do it's a terrible thing when a pastor is confused about the path of spiritual progress of the members meaning that he doesn't really know what builds the people he's hoping and sadly I, I say this and i'm challenging especially those of us who are men of god you don't sit down and just guess what to teach people on saturday night or sunday early in the morning you just think and say Kai, what have i not talked about character people are misbehaving in my church you now run and hammer on character and then you find out that uh, people need to learn on miracles and then you go and teach on miracles your growth will not be constructive every pastor ought to develop people in five areas number one their spiritual lives these are just um additions that i think i should communicate before we go into our discussion tonight number one our spiritual life any pastor any leader that cannot guide the people god has committed to him to really know god to come to a point where they can hear the voice of god to come to a point where they conform to the image of the Christ. To come to a point where the average member is passionate about the things of the kingdom. No matter what else you teach people. If you don't bring them to a point of addiction and love and passion for God. Then they are not growing. Hallelujah. Yes. Where they seek his face where they love him genuinely not where they use him where they love him so that's the first area and that involves them being born again not just being healed they have to be saved pastors make sure the congregation of the people you are leading among other things and before other things their salvation is secured i don't care what else happened in that church if the people are not saved they are not growing praise the lord they must be saved and established in righteousness where your members become people of conviction let me tell you something i have seen congregations where the level of revelation that comes from the preacher to them is very low but i respect those congregations because the little the man of god knows he has brought his members to a point of conviction i'm irritated by an assembly that does not have values spiritual convictions it's better to be wrong about something so that even when you change you know what you left not that you are there today you think divine healing is scriptural tomorrow you are not sure today you think prosperity is good and then your man of god comes and him too he's not sure 
There are times you see pastors oscillating. You go for a conference and hear something and you come back. Ship it to your congregation and teach them. Only for you to grow two weeks later and find out that you wouldn't have brought that revelation that way. And then the members are hearing a lot of things, but they are not growing. Hallelujah. Number two, every true shepherd must be able to build people's finances. I'm absolutely convinced that a man of God who does not pay attention to the financial well-being of his congregation is not only a wicked man of God. He's not only a wicked man of God, but he's a dangerous man of God. You know why? Because the Bible says where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. If you want to get the heart of a congregation focused towards God, there are certain things in their lives that can really become distractions. There is no how you want a man to serve God, lie down, you want him to give you three or four or five hours of his life, whereas he knows that his rent is due. Are we together now? And then it is also wicked. Honestly, this is my proposition. I think it is really wicked. For a man of God to stand up and then say, oh, how many people are going to give one, one million naira? I was telling the school of ministry students. And then you have people come out and then they are, they, are, they are offering. Now, I don't care whether the church is using their offering or not. These people give offerings every week. Even if it's five naira, it left them. Is that true? They pay their time. And then the minister of the gospel in turn is not empowering them. And so they are broke, they are failures in their offices. They are at the lower levels. They can't do nothing. They don't have options. They've not grown to a point where they can be able to say, look, I, can, I want to go to church. Somebody cover for me. No influence. Sometimes we, we teach what we call a replacement theology. Where we can use one dimension of the kingdom to replace the need for another. It doesn't exist. It's error. And a man of God can be so bold in error and mislead people. Many pastors who don't pay attention to the finances of their members are doing well themselves. They are doing well because they are offering spiritual value. And the members sow into their lives. The members maybe pay their rent. Some of the pastors collect salary. So I can teach you all kinds of things and immediately after the service, my dinner is secured. I'm going to go and eat. But will you eat? A good shepherd does not march on his sheep. He lays down his life for his sheep. You see, this is why many congregations are, um, is a beehive of frustrated people. There are issues people have that will not allow them to grow. Number three, every true shepherd should teach people and guide them along the area of excellence in leadership. How to excel career-wise, how to excel family-wise. Every church, every congregation is a unit of family. You cannot have an irresponsible father, a very wicked mother, come to a church. What do you think that bad father will become as a HOD? He will translate his understanding about fatherhood. And that's what he's going to use to lead the department. Are we together now? Every arm robber came from somewhere. He didn't fall from a tree. Are we together? Every prostitute or harlot came from somewhere. All those who are making a mess of society came from family. And a platform like this, the church is an institution that influences the mindset of people. Gives them very, very scriptural perspectives on leadership. How do you excel in your place of work? It matters to God. How do you excel in your endeavor? It matters to God. How do you excel in your business? How do you do it right? Number what now? Number four. 
every pastor must teach his congregation on principles of relationships relationships are everything in this kingdom your breakthrough comes through relationships the tragedy in your life comes through relationships jesus understood this he didn't he didn't play with relationships we lose opportunities because we do not know how to master relationships we lose destiny help us money is not everything as important as it is one ability to maximize a quality relationship will give you what one billion will not give you relationships hallelujah number five every pastor must be able to teach his congregation how to be agents of national transformation every pastor must be able to teach his member life applicable teachings teachings they can take outside of the confines of the church back to society and begin to shape cultures and change systems with it listen let me tell you the churches that command influence in every territory are the churches whose impact are felt even sociologically it's not just by buying rice or giving people sewing machine or, or you know, uh, buying pot or killing cow. Those things are important. But it's not just about doing things. It's about institutionalizing a mindset within a territory. So the church becomes noted. Everybody within that territory benefits. There are so many people benefiting from Koinonia. The National Union of Road Transport Workers. Are benefiting rental services benefiting MTN glow Airtel benefiting are we together now there are many people who may not be Christians but will fight to protect the continuity of koinonia because they can see how it translates to the well-being of their own lives so you build people intentionally you don't just sit down and say, I got up and I think I feel like saying this today. And then people jump. And then at the end of the service, you ask the people, what did you gain? And the person tells you, honestly, me too, I don't know, but my, my spirit picked something. You are not going to grow that way, I assure you. Did you know, did you know that I've taught us here, it's not your intention that becomes your reality, but your conviction. You want to be great. But something about your belief will limit you you want to be greatly anointed but there is something you must know I'm telling you you will thank me in the years to come for these fruits in the name of Jesus Christ I'm chasing after you no matter what I have to do I need you more and more I'm chasing after you No matter what I have to do I need you more and more More and more More When you grow spiritually and otherwise, it becomes, there is something, there is a name God gives this kind of people. He calls them a delightsome land. You know what a, a delightsome? A likable personality. Something about your transition in the spirit creates an effect in this realm. And so you are well desired. Well desired. I was telling the school of ministry um, students yesterday that the project, this project you see called Koinonia, the benefit of Koinonia 
will be experienced in the next 10 to 20 years not now hallelujah my target is people from ages 0 to 45 outside 45 you can join but the target that that generation of individuals is what we want to target in the next 20 years many people you see now 70 years etc in business in politics no matter how they want to hold on to power many of them would have transited it will now be our turn hallelujah so it's a project just like satan destroyed america when god's generals were there preaching what was he doing to, they forgot about their children and the devil just targeted them from 25 years they were there in the crusade and the children were they left the children and the wives at home because they felt those people did not need change so the men of god were preaching and the devil said i, I give up on these ones but he started growing with them channel o came mtv came right all kinds of things came they grew. They didn't train them. They grew. They shaped their ideology. They are the ones today who are the leaders, prime ministers, heads of banks, heads of institutions. And so a system runs. I mean, they play the world like a chess, but it's going to change. I know we don't look like it yet. I assure you, you quote me. I've been saying certain things that I'll keep saying. We will all be great. And the best part is that we will know ourselves. That's what will happen. Don't trivialize the power of the Holy Spirit. Just give him time. He will surprise you. Give him time. Write this word down. Let's begin our teaching. Strategic kingdom influence. Um, let's define influence very quickly. I have a lot to talk about and I want us to finish very fast. Amen and amen and amen. Influence. What is influence? The capacity to have an effect. Influence is the capacity to have an effect on the character, development, and behavior of something or someone. Please make sure you are writing the capacity to have an effect on the character, development, and behavior of something or someone is called influence. When you sustain an ability to create an effect in somebody's behavior, somebody's character, and his development, we call that influence. Number two, Influence is the ability and the platform to change mindsets, comma. Influence is the ability and the platform to change mindsets, comma. Shape opinions and move others to act in a certain way. Change mindsets. So, the ability and the platform to be able to change mindsets, shape opinions, and move others to act in a certain way is called influence. How we need this. One of the keys to kingdom advance in the 21st century is not just evangelism. It's called influence. And I add kingdom influence. We have a mandate as a church. Listen, listen. We are not just here roaming around, wondering what to do with our lives. There is a mandate upon us. That mandate is found in Genesis 1, 26. Help us, media. Genesis 1, 26, Matthew 6, verse 10, and Mark 16, 15 and 16. Genesis 1, 26, Matthew 6, verse 10, Mark 16, 15 and 16. It reveals our mandate as the church. Every one of you under the sound of my voice is part of those to make this mandate come to pass. And God said, Genesis 1.26, Let us make man after our image, our likeness, and let them have sovereign control, dominion, 
sovereign control the power of legislature the ability to extend an influence over the fish of the sea the fowl of the air the cattle and over all the earth over every creeping thing and everything that creeps upon the earth we are God's managers the state of the earth today is a revelation of our failure our inability to manage this domain of God's kingdom we have a mandate as a church Matthew 6 verse 10 everyone read Jesus was teaching this in what we have believed to be the Lord's prayer one to read thy kingdom come how by your will being done in earth exactly as it is in heaven listen heaven is the way it is for two reasons one the presence of god two a culture a culture a culture there is a culture that makes heaven heaven and god is saying when you when we pray this is god's desire that his kingdom his sovereign rule will find expression in this our sphere in the exact way in other words reproduce the culture of heaven in your environment it's a mandate and then he further expands on how to do it mark chapter 16 mark 16 15 to 16 are you there media please help us you're giving us mark 10 you have to correct it Mark 16, 15, okay. And he said unto them, read on please, one to read. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Hold on. The first assignment is go. That means he expects a body that is moving. Action. Go. Then he tells you the strategy. He says, he didn't say go around the street. He says, go ye into, enter a system called cosmos. Don't just go around. Thank God for sharing tracks and all of that. But he gives you an idea. His system of invasion. I want you to enter a strata of human activities. And when you are established in that strata, he said, preach the gospel not to every human being. Not to every human being to every creature creature everything alive should feel the impact of the gospel communicate that influence and that ideology write this down our mandate as a church not koinonia i mean the global church the ecclesia our mandate as the church is to establish the lordship of christ i will keep drumming this till we get it again and again establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men that's the first dimension to establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men and the instrument we use to produce this is called the gospel the gospel the gospel is not just a message the gospel is an instrument the end of it is to establish the lordship of Christ in the hearts of men. Number two, to extend, this is my concern tonight, to extend the culture and authority of heaven across every territory and strata of human activity. I'll take it again. To extend the culture and authority of heaven, to extend the culture and the authority of heaven across every territory and strata or sphere of human activity listen if all we do is establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men that's important but we must go the extra mile to make sure that every strata of human activity also come under the influence of the christ look up please let me tell you where our lukewarm attitude came from our lukewarm attitude came from preachers who in an attempt to make us have the perspective of eternity in view have trivialized the necessity of the church today 
Are we together now? So in a bid to teach us and prepare us for rapture, teach us about the second coming of Christ, etc., etc., right? We, we push it to the limit. And then we give people an idea like every other thing is a waste. Every other thing. Don't, don't worry about building no house. Don't build any business. Don't do anything. It's unnecessary. Just make sure you love God and remain rapturable. And we say that to justify. And then we find out that after 20 years, Jesus has not come. But your child has come. But your bills have come. These are the ones that are coming. Jesus that you are preparing for is coming. That's true. But he has not come. But your bills have arrived. Right? The need for um, your responsibility has arrived. We have to be careful the way we teach people things. Many of us are well-meaning people, but we are victims of an ideology that must be balanced. I'm always obsessed with balance. Of course, we have the other side of the equation. People who are so careless about the things of God. They are just carnal. All they want is cars, houses, oh, this and that and that. They are, they are so carnal. Those kinds of people will go to hell when Jesus comes. Because they are obviously not living with eternity in view. But there is a balance. Everyone say there is a balance. There is a balance so we have an assignment to extend the culture when promise was you know talking to us i'm sure some of you were shocked looking at him you cannot imagine that a gentleman like this was keeping dreadlocks and wearing earrings all around when he came to zaria you think he just wanted to wear it he was reacting to something within him somebody told him that appearance or that state was equal to manhood and masculinity. And so he was a victim of his mindset. What happened to him? Not just deliverance, but what happened to him was a translation. Another idea, an alternative structure came upon his life. See, you don't change people by just flogging them, insulting them, castigating them, or telling them, do this. When you tell somebody, do this, the person will not do it. He's reacting to something within him. If you don't change, that's why they bring people out of prison. And they say, make sure you don't steal again. And you see the person standing. They say, sign here. And he's signing. One month later, they say, ah. They say, honestly, this time around, this and that and that. Because they, they don't create programs that influence the minds of the people. You cast away that spirit and change their paradigm. And then you win them. Amen? Let me discuss our mandate and the 21st century. I really want this to be relevant to us. The mandate of the church, I think one of the confusion in the church right now is how to be able to weave kingdom living and the reality of our changing society. Whether you believe it or not, times are changing. Say times are changing. The only constant thing in life is change. The 21st century has brought in a lot of changes. A lot of changes changes in the way even some of us who are young met certain things that we can even relate to and say ah things have changed we're not so old like that but at least we can look back and be able to say yesterday there was xyz today's is now obsolete not to talk of our parents and our fathers and mothers here they can tell you a lot of things we have no idea some of our little ones here don't know what a typewriter looks like some of them, when they grow, I'm sure they'll not even know what a stove looks like. I'm sure by the time they're adults, we'll be using e-cookers. Oh, don't limit the mind of man. Believe me. Who knew that somebody will create something as, as much as, I mean, hundreds of tons and then lift it up in the air, just like that. Even you, you can't hang in the air. Yet, plane that is heavier than you can rise up in the air. So, don't, don't trivialize the power of the mind. Cultures have changed. The interests of people have changed. 
perspectives have changed technology has changed a lot of things technology has changed our appetites the world right now is only hours away from anywhere anywhere hours away i'm sure that in the in the next future or in, in the next uh, maybe five ten years i'm sure you may not have to dial numbers to call them again they will program them to work with your mind i just think of nas and his phone beeps it can happen I mean, there's artificial intelligence in phones. Phones can feel, phones can record, they can have memories. So the 21st century is here. And what is the attitude as far as our mandate is concerned? Because the old ways of doing things, even as far as kingdom advancement, will no longer be effective. I think it was school of ministry again, I was telling them, did you know that right now you can stand near an influential man's daughter attempting to preach to her they can just snap you and in five minutes the police are coming to catch you and they'll say you are harassing her are we together now you are harassing her so the world the world is is gradually strangling the opportunities the access points we have to reach people and we must be able to reinvent ourselves by the Spirit of God. To adjust to the change and yet be effective in communicating our mandate. Is God blessing us? One of the tragic things about the metamorphosis of the church with respect to the current change is that most of the change that is being effected in the church is not effected with the authority and the supervision of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you what happens when you try to adjust to the 21st century outside of the Holy Spirit. You will become something else. Completely something else. There are pastors under pressure to turn their churches to align to the 21st century. Please listen to me. There are businessmen, there are, there are entrepreneurs, there are all kinds of people, families, the, the paradigm of fatherhood, parenting, leadership is being compelled to change to adjust to 21st century living but you see a believer is not just one who is born again a believer is one who has submitted to the governing authority of the kingdom and that your change must be with the holy spirit supervision so that he can tell you which attributes are timeless that will not change and which ones are flexible enough not everything in the christian life is permitted to change there are timeless things. There are components of the believer's life that must remain constant. And I'll tell you where we get this teaching from. 1 Corinthians 9.22, please. I need to balance this teaching. Is God blessing us already? 1 Corinthians 9.22. This is the Bible stand that many contemporary preachers sadly have picked in. And we have brought it to seemingly be a strategy. Now, I believe in metamorphosis. I'm teaching you change now. But that that change must be guided by the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Everyone read. This is Paul writing to the Corinthian church. One to read. To the weak became as I as weak, that I may gain the weak. Are we together? Read on. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Now, Paul is saying something interesting here. Let me translate this for you. Paul is saying, I can become anything to anybody. This is a nice verse for Satan to take advantage of. Meaning, become a smoker to smokers. Are we together? Become a prostitute to prostitutes to win them. That's not what the Bible is saying. But that's what has happened in many churches. In our obsession to metamorphose and become relevant in the 21st century, we have been misguided by this scripture and many things that happen there are churches where members vote the sermon for the week that the pastor preaches are we together there are churches where all kinds of things happen now i don't insult these people at least they are serving god but that's that's dangerous we are removing certain ancient landmarks so as i attempt to teach us on that's why i call this strategic kingdom influence not just kingdom influence it must be strategic Meaning the Holy Spirit is involved. Hallelujah. 
the idea listen the idea of paul here is that i am able to make adjustment the idea here is not an idea about leaving your convictions it's an idea of making adjustments the summary of this entire communication is that paul is saying because of the reality of my society i am able to make adjustments listen any church any pastor that cannot adjust should be ready for empty pews i repeat any pastor any businessman any ceo any worker that cannot adjust notice i didn't say leave your convictions adjust means to create allowance for the excesses of people adjust means to create allowance for the limitations of people adjust means to create allowance for the perspectives of people when you become rigid and stringent forget about advancing the kingdom in today's world one of our fathers who has done that most remarkably that is a model for all of us is papa e. E. Adeboe. i've studied the redeemed christian church very carefully and what had been the secret of their exponential growth and influence i will tell you the key is this flexibility not compromise there is a difference between compromise and flexibility papa Iya deboe is a man of strong convictions he's very conservative in his approach to christianity alongside his wife but he realized that if i must achieve the mandate of seeing every redeemed church or at least in every two or three houses let there be one redeemed member i must be flexible enough and yet uncompromising the key is to maintain your convictions but give allowance for the conviction of others let them be able to find a place in your vision and so you see that it began to open up different models of redeemed branches and so you can see a redeemed branch that is generally conservative still adhering to the foundational tenants and you can see one that is quite modern in fact very modern you may not know that this is redeemed his job as a man of god is to ensure that the central leadership sustain the foundational um, model and the understanding of redeem this is a winning strategy so you can find redeem in france you can find redeem in um in in certain places that you would not expect many pastors are unwilling to bend we are stringent on our ideologies and we do not want to create flexibility so the key is that we must be able to make adjustment everybody say adjustment adjustment is one key to strategic kingdom advancement you cannot say i cover my hair i don't i don't believe in wearing trousers for instance or living hair. and you say any other person i come across who i see with trousers or hair not covered is a devil i tear the person down you are going to be frustrated at the same time nobody should put pressure on you to influence your convictions unnecessarily you have a right to sustain your convictions but at the same time you must be able to give room are we together now i'm teaching us on our mandate and the 21st century i've gone to minister in several places and um when you go to minister in places you'll be amazed the approach of many people I've gone to ministries that are very conservative very very conservative I've gone to other ministries that are generally charismatic and unorthodox I've gone to ministries that are wild I've gone to ministries that are lawless that one is not charismatism is lawlessness yet in the midst of it I have been able to make adjustment without violating my convictions are we together koinonia runs on certain convictions but part of the reason why god has blessed us is because we have been able to make adjustments are we together now adjustments that can allow people to to come in 
and be able to not necessarily incorporate their ideologies but give them space to know God for themselves and in that knowing God many people begin to adjust not by force but on the strength of the information that is coming to them is God blessing us you cannot win people you resent. You cannot stand and all of a sudden you see a lady with heavy makeup wearing a very tight trouser and all of that and you know you just give this atmosphere of look at this prostitute and this devil. You want to kill me. And your idea was to come and win her. And then you come and stand and oh you are a sinner. You see I will not listen to your message. No, 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 no. It has nothing to do with being angry. I will not listen to your message. You come to preach to me for 10 minutes. You don't even know what my name is. You are initiating me into a cult. You are misrepresenting the love of Christ. At the same time, I will not come and see you and you say, Ah, uh, you really want to preach Christ to me. If prove that you love by coming to my house or coming to this I'm, I'm in the club if you really want to win me come and meet me at the club I won't come go to hell are we together there is a balance so that we don't begin to do stupid things there are ladies that have entered relationship you ask them why they say I'm on a pro ah, you are not SSS that's, that's, that's too costly you say I entered relationship it's not love or oh, I don't love him ask him I, I am passionate about souls you are getting it wrong I'm trying to explain this scripture. I become all things to all men. Does not mean I leave my convictions to turn into everything. No. Whether you are wearing jeans or suit, you are a Christian. And being a Christian is, is exact. There's no confusion about it. Christianity is not Buddhism. There are exact tenets. There are exact foundational convictions. Write this down. We must carefully study the word. Please, let's write. Let's hurry up. We must carefully study the word and adopt timeless scriptural strategies for effective kingdom advance. We must carefully study the word and adopt timeless scriptural strategies for effective kingdom advance. Listen, the key to kingdom advancement is found in the Bible. Timeless secrets that can advance the kingdom through any culture any kind of civilization and when we study the bible we will find therein secrets that can survive any kind of sociological metamorphosis it doesn't matter what dispensation the truths there remain timeless keys to kingdom influence let's discuss now Keys to kingdom influence. Ask and now give the nations to you, O oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see. Your life as it rises on us. Sing it one more time. Ask and I'll give the nations to you, O oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see your life. As it rises on us. Keys to kingdom influence. Listen, I've told us that the key to strategic kingdom advancement is called influence. 
the new kind of evangelism that will break through any protocol and any hardness is called influence evangelism the advocacy that comes when a man can gain a platform and is able to influence the convictions of people never trivialize influence and its effect to a person a territory a people and a civilization at every point in your life you are being influenced by somebody and you are influencing somebody keys are very important in the kingdom you hear jesus speak again about keys and i will give you the keys of the kingdom the keys of the kingdom are the mysteries the laws and the principles that give us access the keys of the kingdom are the mysteries the laws the principles that give us access there are keys to kingdom influence and in the name of the lord jesus christ i'm praying that as i begin to teach this as you embrace it you will step into a level of influence that will surprise you the lord spoke to us and said this is our year of multiplied grace and influence he expects us to do more and he's guiding us on how to get there number one the first key to strategic kingdom influence is to have a pace setting trailblazing global mentality write it the way i said it don't write your idea pace setting comma i took time to write it this way it's supposed to create an effect don't scatter it pace setting comma trailblazing comma global mentality write it and look at me let's cane out certain mediocrities in our mind we're on our way to better days we're on our way to better days mm. we're on our way to better days hold on pace setting trailblazing global mentality see we many of us are still growing and we're still coming into the comprehension of how low and depraved our thinking and our ideology is as marketed to us by our institutions as marketed to us by our upbringing as marketed to us by our christian advocates our pastors we are largely victims of the thinking of a man who have sat under for many years our approach the approach of the average christian is not global the approach of the average christian is not pace setting we are comfortable with mediocrity yet we want to command influence a music artist no global mentality no pace setting mentality so we are comfortable borrowing anything from anywhere not yielding to the spirit of creativity that will launch us into unimaginable feats there are many of us seated here who can do so much for god but our mindsets are small i have challenged the leaders again and again koinonia is an apostolic ministry this is only an a local platform for us to meet together but the approach is global the approach is, is way beyond Nigeria and Africa. You see, we must be able to excel. Let's look at a few scriptures. Matthew 5, 14. Then Deuteronomy 6, 2 to 3. Media, you have to help us. We really have to be fast. Jesus said this, Matthew 5, 14. Write it down and please look up. One, two, read. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. The second statement explains the first line. It says you are the light of the world. Then it compares you. It says you are a city. In other words, can a city that is set on a hill be hidden? 
global approach to life. We start up businesses with no idea of global approach. The average business in Nigeria, if it lasts 10 years, is a miracle. 15 years is a wonder. We don't think far. Right? The average church, do you know how many churches start in January and by December they are dead? Because the way the pastor started and was running, you would think rapture will happen tomorrow. And he runs no, no sense of leadership, no pace setter, trailblazer mentality. We come into a system and do the exact same thing. Listen, listen. There is a difference between a manager and a leader. A manager maintains status quo. A leader breaks new frontiers. A true apostolic spirit is a groundbreaking spirit. You cannot be under a ministry like this and then your thinking is still old. Daniel 6, verse 2 to 3. Pace setting mentality. Hallelujah. This was the story of Daniel. Look up, please. Let's see the kind of mindset Daniel had. It's not just that he was called Daniel, he reigned over certain provinces. The Bible says, and over these three presidents. Sorry, I'm cutting from verse 1. Of whom Daniel was what? Please read it. Of whom Daniel was first means a pace setter. First means a leader. Surpassing ordinary standards. He said that the princes might give accounts to them and the kings should have no damage. Verse 3. Then this Daniel was what? Everybody say pace setters. This Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes. Why? Because an excellent spirit. Was it because he was a Christian? Because he possessed certain things that made him irresistible. And the king thought to set him over what? Influence as a result of a pace setting mentality. How many Christians start their work and never dream of becoming the managers or the people at the highest echelons? They don't care. In fact, they run away. When they tell them they are considering you for promotion, they say, ah, have a for what now? Have a God, is it that you don't know what? It's a demonic mentality. Whoever taught you that, is, it, it may be a sincere person, but that's a doctrine of demons that keeps the church back. I love Jesus. When Jesus showed up, he broke status quo. Genesis 41, give us 33, then we move to 38 to 44, please, very fast. Sorry, we have to read these things because I want to press something in tonight. Genesis 41, give us verse 33, then we move to 38 down to 44. Now look up, please, everyone. This was the story of Joseph. Now, therefore, this is Joseph, advising pharaoh now therefore look out for a man discreet and wise whoever qualifies whoever has that mentality give him this kind of influence set him over the land of egypt there is influence for the taking but there is a requirement who is that one man in egypt who has sustained a paradigm of thinking that can produce this result give us verse 38 hear what the king says in response and Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find... Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. May that be your testimony. Yeah. That even your enemies will sit together and say, Let's tell ourselves the truth. Can we find a trailblazer? That when the government wants to sow a seed as a government to a church, they turn and say, Which, which church is making impact that is consistent with the values of the government? Can we find such a one as this is? A man of whom the spirit of God is. We are reading down to 44. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, listen. For as much as God has showed thee this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. 
Watch how cheap influence becomes. Thou shalt do what? I give you influence instantly. Thou shalt be over my house. I hope you know Pharaoh knew that Joseph was not an Egyptian. There are certain levels of mentality you have that will veto your background. All this issue of we don't accept people from this state. They've not found an exceptional person. That's why. That's when you see them breaking the rule. They will say this is the first time we're doing it. Say that's that I'm a, I'm a first timer. I have, I have the spirit of breaking new grounds. Thou shalt be over my house. And according to my word shall all thy word shall all the people be ruled can you imagine that's a costly that's a risk from pharaoh he says only in the throne will i be greater than thou and pharaoh said unto joseph see i have set thee over how many all the land of egypt do you think that's good for the kingdom do you think Joseph's father and brothers would have been allowed to come to Egypt if he didn't have influence. Are we together now? Can you see the advantages of his influence? His influence afforded him to say, where is my father? The same way when you have influence, you can look at somebody and say, you said you are looking for a job, please come. I know you. Your being in Koinonia has qualified you. Even if you don't know anything, I know you love God and you can listen. We have preached people. We have, we have destroyed opportunities for the church to rise. Because of mentalities that we think are good. The church is almost an endangered species compared to the world's global brand in terms of advancement. We are there smiling, throwing ourselves under the anointing and then the world is, is gaining, is squeezing the church into a mold. And one policy can just write us away. And Pharaoh took off his ring, a symbol of royalty, from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck, 43. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, bow the knee. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. The last verse. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in the land. Shout influence. influence. Say it again. Influence. In our families, there's nobody to speak for us. When we are suffering, we just call on God directly. And God wants to answer, but there is no envoy, no human being that can partner with God to wipe our tears. Do you know it's a cause to have generations of people with no influential person in that family? You hear people here say, I'm the first person to go to school. I'm the first person to get a job. You know the danger? Every other person surrounds you like worms. Drawing from you. You are earning 100,000 and there are 22 people waiting and hoping to receive their share of cake from you. Leadership is the passion to excel. When I talk of leadership, I don't just mean ruling. Leadership in terms of excelling. The passion to excel at an uncommon level. I'm explaining to you what pace-setting, trailblazing global mentality is. In one word, is leadership. The passion to excel at an uncommon level so as to gain access over that sphere. Listen, the reason why you excel is so that you can rise to the highest level and then be able to gain access. We need men and women who have access. And I tell you, Koinonia, hear me. This is what you are becoming. Are we together now? Oh, this is what you are becoming. Just give us time. In the next few years, in the next few years, you know the way if somebody is walking and he says, 
my name is Nas Dangote, even if he's not related to Dangote, that name has already brought favor to his life. I trust God that Koinonia in the future will be, it, it will be like a, a signet ring of favor. I will never pastor and lead people who are failures. We just comfort ourselves. And, and no, 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 no. A passion to excel. You are in agriculture. You are thinking, how do I lead? Not Kai. How do I get my small one mudu of beans? Me and my wife, she's not even complaining. You are not pace setting. You are not trailblazing. Remember. That if all you want to do is succeed, you are carnal. But if you want to succeed to gain influence and allow God come into that space, you are an ambassador. Always attach a kingdom motivation to your pursuit. And then there is no level of pursuit that will embarrass you. I will never be small. I hate it and it is for the kingdom. Number two. The second key to kingdom influence is character. You want to command kingdom influence. In our generation today, you need character. Everybody say character. What is character? Christ-likeness. Moral uprightness. Second Peter chapter 1. From verse 5 to 9 talks to us about sustaining kingdom character just write it down we may not have time to look at it listen brothers and sisters please look at me if you want to be global those outside please pay attention if you want to go far in business in ministry in your career you have to curb a lot of excesses in your life. The Bible says, listen to me. The Bible says, um, all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. All things are permissible, but not all things are necessary. On your journey to influence, there are weights. Some things are not necessarily sinful. They are just weights. Weights. Character. Moral uprightness. From the way you speak, the way you dress, the way you behave. You want to be a leader, you are in a place, they are sharing food. Ah, I have not got to, you are just stretching. You are not a leader. God cannot promote you to disgrace him like that. There is a decorum. There is a protocol for great people. I'm not just talking about pretending and, and living a fake and a false life. But you must be disciplined. You are dressing, you iron your clothes. You talk well. You see people, you greet them. You don't see somebody like our daddy here and say, Ah, daddy, how are you, bro? You know, as if you are talking to, to yourself. No. Character. There are many people who do not have character. Moral uprightness. You see an elderly woman moving your mother, something you cannot help her pick up the load. No character. There's this wild nature that our generation of young people have that we must tame and cut away. We, we associate youthfulness to wildness. That means if you are temperate, people think you are too cold. Be wild. You won't be a leader that way. Look at how teachers, the teachers in our school, who teach our students. You see how they dress? You see how they talk? Now, I'm not against anything, but a young man comes, rings in his five hands. I'm not against all of those things, but you are not, it's not seen, but it's a weight. The students are watching you. The next day, they come with it too. You sag your jeans. A teacher, you see jeans with, um, um, uh, what they call it, all kinds of, there's this patch jeans that you see that exposes everywhere. I mean, there's nothing for the imagination. Believe me, if nobody has told you anything is wrong with it, Joshua Selman is saying it, write it, mark me. Something is wrong with that kind of thing. You won't go far with it. 
I'll preach. Oh. Hallelujah. See, there is a protocol to greatness. You must give up something to go up. You cannot go up with everything you wear with down. It's, it, you are down because a weight held you. If you are ready to move up, be ready to drop some things. Vulgar communications. Don't speak intelligently. Many of us today cannot construct a good letter, a proposal, because our vulgar speaking and communication has destroyed us. You are writing something to apply for a job. You are writing you as you, for as letter four. You see that? I need a job from you. Thanks. And the manager looks at it and says, look at, look at all this nuisance to our company. We have labored to build ourselves and these people are coming to destroy us. See, our generation interprets modesty as weakness. When your life is temperate, you feel guilty for it. Because we live in a generation where you must be loud and wild to be thought of. Those people will not last long. History is full of many of them. Prison cells are full of many of them. They created their own rules to life. Everybody say, I'll be a man of character. Say it, I'll be a man of character or a woman of character. Yes. Every bad wife was a bad human being. Every irresponsible father was an irresponsible human being. Every bad leader was a bad human being. You bring in your personality. You bring in your mindset. It doesn't just change when you become CEO. It's an attitude. Hallelujah. Moral uprightness. You are calm. Not the person moving around, gossiping about everybody, saying everything about everybody. No. Only cheap people do that. Only idle people do that. Hallelujah. There are rules for greatness. You ignore them, you will never be great. The level that God has brought us in ministry by the grace of God. You see all these people inside and outside. I honor God and I bless them. But never make a mistake. They didn't just come just because of the anointing. There are factors combined together. This is what I'm teaching you. See, let me tell you. People never become loyal to you until they probe your life and they are satisfied that you are worth being loyal to. Loyalty is not a gift. You earn it. Are we together? There are so many people who see, especially some of us young people, and they think the loyalty is just because of solidarity. No! Loyalty is a product of a track record. People probe your life and come to a point where they are satisfied with your convictions and they, they, are, they, are, they are comfortable that you are a leader worth submitting to. You don't command influence just because you think you are spiritual. Character. There are many pastors who don't have character. You just get up and go and disturb somebody's house early in the morning. Peace be unto this house. And pastor, so, 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 bang, 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 bang. Madam is there tea. You think it's a nice thing. They are marking you. You represent boredom to them. No character. Are you anointed? Yes. Will you last like that? No. That's how we inconvenience a lot of people. You now meet somebody and prophesy to the person and say, transfer 7,000 or 10,000 to my account. God keeps quiet and you think he was right. He was very wrong. It's just his mercy that overlooked it. There are pastors who do that. The moment they say, I want to pray for you, what they say is, I want money from you. Moment they pray for you, they just say, transfer 2,000 to my account so that he can activate the faith. There is a place for seed faith. But many of the things we do, that's why a young man right now is associated with the moment parents see certain people, even some of us young ministers, you go to pray in somebody's house and they are already suspecting. They are looking at you. You have to talk for five minutes for them to eat, to loosen up and say, oh, this guy, this guy looks very cultured. 
character. You get to somebody's house in five minutes, you have entered their kitchen. They are prime plantain, you carry one, you eat, you go out. They are watching you. There are some of us like this, I must talk to you. I want you to become something. And we must curb these things. Don't do that. Say, no, 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 we are free. They always allow me. No, see, let me tell you. Part of character is the ability to say no to some things that are even good. You must see. There are certain things that is like Esau. You are trading your birthright for it. There are times people have carried fat seeds and, and checks, something to give me. And the Holy Spirit will say, no, 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 no. no," Because in their minds, they are feeling guilty. They are not just blessing me out of conviction. They just feel tall. This man of God has prayed. And you see them, I'm ready to go. And you see them pinching themselves, giving signs. And somebody will enter and they come out. And then I tell them, I say, no, 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 no. I receive it, I bless it, and I sow it back. And it's, ah, man of God, can we have your number, please? Honestly, you see that? You have earned loyalty because you have let them know that you, your convictions are greater than money. For some of us, Abba, you collect and count it and say, Abba, madam, you too. Abba, what is all this? How much is my transport from where I left? I did night vigil, deliverance, the money. You are dropping 10,000, you drop it on the table. There, I say, madam, add something. Are you fake? No. But you are a suspect. It's easy for people to think you went to collect power. Some of us, the way we dress. Uh, now please, um, don't, 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 don't feel bad. I'm, I'm just trying to work on you. I've seen men of God. Um, please, I'm not, uh, I wish I don't have to preach this, but I have to obey God. From your hairstyle, the way you look, you look like a thief. You look like, I mean, the way you are dressing. And even when you are talking, people are afraid. They are not at ease. Honestly, you may not be, you may be the nicest person available. But something about your lack of character and environment. You tell a lady, I want to see you, she's shaking. Because she doesn't even know what can happen. I want you to be on a project that you must be trusted. Be on a project. Be trustworthy. Not perfection, but you are sincere enough to be trustworthy. When people commit their loyalty to you, it's a trust. You don't disappoint it. How many pastors have dashed down the loyalty of people? Loyalty is a trust, brothers and sisters. So God is talking to some of us now who are careless with little, little things. You just sit down and send a text to four or five sisters. You make jollof rice for me. You, my birthday is coming by June. I want a suit. Sam, you buy uh, this and that. There are men of God that do that. I'm sorry if, if you are in that category, forgive me, but it's wrong. I cannot imagine myself coming now to tell heads of department, all of you bring 100,000. My birthday is coming in June. Choir, you bring, bring, buy me shoe. Uh, all the pastors, <laughs> Pastor Femi and Alpha, and you who have congregations, so you people, you. Ah, ah. God didn't send you to be a burden to the people. Sometimes we do these things sincerely, but I'm telling you now, there is need for adjustment. Don't do that. See, bless the people. And let them bless you based on their perception of who they think you are. They will surprise you. They will surprise you. There is nobody who will have a track record of transformation from your life who will not give back to you. Amen. Let's go to the next point. Some of you don't seem to like this point. The third key to strategic kingdom influence is excellence excellence what is excellence the quality of doing things well the quality of doing things well write this down the difference most times is not what you do but how you do it the difference, brothers and sisters, that makes you a great man of influence most times 
it's not what you do it's how you do it while i was babbing this this evening i was talking to my baba and i was just telling him that do you know that there are babbing saloons in abuja that you will pay thousands of naira and the people are not as good as him but you will pay because of how they do it the clipper for babbing is different for carving is different there is really nothing there it's just packaging but because of that packaging you will pay for it he was telling me that the I think it was Oga Jordan, he should be here. He went to Abuja or so, and then he went to Bab somewhere with his brother. And they paid 3,000. They gave them wine and chinchin. Is that what you cannot buy? How much is chinchin? 10 naira. How much is this Coke? This, this, this uh, heaven, pure heaven wine, 250. Add it together. You paid 3,000, and then you watch March. But listen, it's excellent. So you'll be rewarded. When you are excellent, you name your price. You see that? What you are doing now, are you excellent in it? Please let me talk to us. I salute, I know many people in Koinonia are engaged actively in all kinds of things. But I want to challenge you, are you excellent? Oh, you make kunu. You think it's small, but are you excellent? Why don't you think of a way of doing it very well? Don't say kunu is not nice. If you make it well, I will buy it. I think someone in the protocol, he has um, some popcorn machines on campus. And then I told him, I said, I want to taste your popcorn. Let me see what and what do you put there. And he was telling me what he said. All that one is stories. Bring it. Let me taste. Let me know whether you are excellent. See, let me tell you something. The minimum standard in our world today is excellence. Even if you don't have the finance to grow into it, have the mindset first. So you have only one cloth. And that one cloth will make it look as if you are not excellent. You are because already you, you've had an ideology of excellence. You iron it. You look smart. It's not doing ministry that makes you excel. It's how you do it. It's not preaching that makes you excel. It's how you preach. It's not doing business that makes customers come to you. It's how you do it. It's not doing your job that makes you excel, but how you do it. Exceptional people most times are not necessarily super skilled people they are just people who have been able to force their value to be recognized excellent say i'll be excellent say it again i'll be excellent number four give me a few minutes here and we'll pray open your spirit and your ears right now to what you're about to hear <clears throat> the fourth key in our day in the 21st century to strategic kingdom advancement is called results we're on our way to better days we're on our way to better days we're on our way to better days on common results is one of the greatest key greatest keys to strategic kingdom influence john 15 verse 8 listen i will share with you certain things about results today that will make you go back to your life and you will insist that i must produce results john 15 verse 8 15 not 5 15 verse 8 okay herein is my father glorified read on that ye bear fruit much fruit exceptional fruit notable result it says so by so doing you will prove that you have been following me diligently listen brothers and sisters our world today thrives on results. Pace setters, influencers 
are those who command results. Remember my teaching, commanding results. I want you to pay attention right now. Write this down. Uncommon supernatural result is the end of all argument. Uncommon supernatural result is the end of all argument. Creation is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of God. Waiting for their manifestation. I tell you, I feel the anointing of the Spirit as I'm talking about this. Something will happen. Something must happen to you tonight. Uncommon result is the end of all arguments. Write this down. Results demonstrate dominion and control over obstacles, limitations, and circumstances. Results demonstrate dominion and control over obstacles, limitations, and circumstances. Oh, hallelujah. I'm a believer in the word of God. Results. Listen, look at me. When you produce results in your life, it shows certain things. That you have authority. You have got the keys that commands authority. I told you that the fear of man is the inability to control situations and circumstances. There are a number of people that were brought here that are sick this night. That's, that's, that's a situation. That's a circumstance. You hear them say circumstances beyond our control. And whoever can bring it under control must command influence. Mark Zuckerberg wields tremendous influence because he was able to bring a particular dimension of science under control. Uncommon supernatural results are a sign that you truly have authority over circumstances. Part of the reasons why there are so many people inside and outside is because by the grace of God, and with all humility, to an extent, God has been able to grace us to show that we have sustained certain keys to command consistent control and dominion over certain aspects of life. I was in Kaduna when we ministered and we were in the restaurant together um, with my people. We were just trying to eat, have a meal before we rush and come back to Zaria. And while we were there, just trying to order a meal, a woman looks at me. And um, ah, the woman was looking at me and now I, I started feeling embarrassed. I said, Madam, do I know you? She said, you are Pastor Joshua. I said, yes. She said, ah, well done, sir. And I looked, I said, ah, Madam, how are we? You know, I was playing with her little boy. And I said, where do I know you? And the woman just nodded. She said she was going to tell me a little story. And she said, I came for counseling two years ago, looking as wretched as anything. A single mom with a child, no hope for marriage, finances crashing, everything being destroyed. And you prayed for me and you prophesied. You told me that they were going to call me back to the job and they would send me to the marketing department and I should go there. Say, man of God, that's exactly what happened. They sent me to the marketing department and I was, I was sad. And she did her hand like this. I saw a ring. She said, two months ago, I got married. Even with the child. She pointed outside and I saw a clean black E-class. She said, will you believe that I will be the owner of this? Brothers and sisters, say results. One result will end every kind of argument. Every kind. Is God speaking to us? Results. Pastors produce results. Produce results. You know why our prayer department, by the grace of God, is like, is like second koinonia. It's like midweek service of koinonia for many people. Because of results. They are praying and they are seeing results. Nobody will come and spend two, three hours here just like that. People are not idiots. 
results. By the time your life, listen, I don't care how much you pray or fast. If there is no result, you'll be frustrated. The end of your walk with God is that God, ah, you come to a point where you become so full of the anointing of the spirit. You can produce a common result. Fill me up until I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. Fill me up until I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. Sing one time. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run have a passion i like you to look at every area of your life and be tired of being barren of results you are a pastor no results no healings no miracles no salvation no transformation and you explain away well and say it's because i'm telling the truth people are not coming all those things are flimsy excuses results when a family that is barren comes and there is a miracle that's results there are some results you cannot argue with. No. No. You're a businessman. Don't worry that people don't believe in you. My brother, produce results and you will close the mouth of any and everybody. Even if all you are doing is packing suck away. Just produce results. Let me tell you something. It's frustrating to make noise about things you don't have results to show. Because your results are supposed to be your noise in the school of greatness. Not your words. I can do this. I am this and that. No. I can pray. Where is the fruit of the prayer? I can fast. Where is the fruit of the fasting? I am warded. Where is it? Results. You want to command influence in our world today. You need results. You need results. This is the apex of this teaching tonight. You need results. Supernatural results. Write the following things about results. Results are a product of correct understanding and application of laws and principles. Results are a product of correct understanding and application of laws and principles let me show you a scripture that would probably really really surprise you give us Matthew 14 please let's look at it Matthew 14 Shabaratu Matthew 14 we'll read from verse 23 and um, we'll read down to the end let's hurry up and when he had sent the multitudes away everybody watch this he went up into a mountain apart to pray and when the evening was come, he was there alone. Rush, media, just continue. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. There was a situation those in the ship could not control. Next verse. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, doing what? Brothers and sisters, the same water, the same water was responding differently to Jesus. The same water. You know why? Because Jesus was operating on certain principles. Are we together now? Next verse. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, 
they were troubled saying it is a spirit notable results and they cried out for fear there is a kind of result that will not only make people celebrate you they will be afraid that one will move beyond the realm i watch some of you as you are sitting down and the power of god begins to break out i see everybody looking around and you are just trying to adjust trying to show like i'm, I'm okay i'm not afraid there are certain results that can happen in your life it will make the heart of men fear but straightway jesus spake to them saying be of good cheer it is i he said be not afraid verse 28 and peter said unto him lord if it be thou bid me come unto thee on the water 29 mm. and he said come and when peter was come down out of the water he walked on the water to go to jesus 30 this is my verse of emphasis but when he saw the wind boys terrors he was afraid and began to sing and he cried saying lord save me look at this two people are standing on water one is sinking the other one is standing was it the water never the water same nigeria same economy same dollar rise same everything are we together now same harshness in ministry same being in the north where they say people are persecuted but then you sustain a mystery jesus was standing and when peter cried he lifted peter and peter stood just like him meaning you can bring people to your experience listen there was something Jesus knew that made that water treat him that way. There is something you do not know that is making your life turn around. Someone is walking through it like this. Life is responding to people in different ways on the strength of the laws they have kept. Please hear me. Correct understanding and application of laws and principles. Number two results are a product of mastery 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 exceptional competence you have mastered the laws that produce them so thorough that you do it unconsciously that's the kind of attitude that produces results number three results are a product of diligence there are many times you keep knocking on the door of destiny until it opens sometimes you may knock for many years but you continue diligence and persistence is what separates men from boys diligence number four and i want you to leave this take home this one tonight results are a product of the presence of the anointing the anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. When results become supernatural and consistent, then there's no limit to the influence of the person producing it. When results become notable and consistent, listen, listen, if you produce results for a short time, it will not create the effect. It needs to be consistent. That's why you find out that God can be using a particular man of God or a church. He can continue for many years. And then one, is like he hits a breaking point in the spirit. In one year, he will step into a dimension of increase. Consistency. Consistency. I was watching a video of Steve's Joe. Late Steve's Joe. Apple founder. 1991 1991 he was talking to their team of executives and if you hear that guy's idea as at 91 everything he was saying they would do they did men who produce results brothers and sisters if you're part of this ministry you must produce results not just receive results produce results in every area hallelujah when our sister came up and said she got five points i laughed but i was impressed with her but i'm not impressed enough until we find 20 people in a row that's notable enough that's the type we can clap with and smile set your standard so high 
even when they are clapping for you you are still pressing to move higher if you set your standard too low you will hit it easily that's what mediocrity is setting low standards I like her she said four point something when she hit it she set another one you must set a very high standard there is such a high standard that I put in ministry that's why I don't compete because the standard alone I keep competing against that standard is enough to engage me hallelujah I want to get to a point where I will be so full of the Holy Ghost so full of the anointing of his spirit I'm telling you you don't have to start praying for people it doesn't matter what you are talking about they will pay to get your presence in a place even if it's just to sit down they know they will never be the same fill me up till I overflow I want to run over I want to run over please fill me up till I overflow I want to run listen let me challenge you everybody here create a system that measures your growth don't mark your script by yourself and score yourself a and organize speech and price for yourself you're a mediocre when you do that challenge your standard don't do small things and rejoice over it let me tell you something the key to mediocrity is finding one person you are better than and settling down because of that as a pastor i'm better than this guy I say, great, I'm better than this guy. Those kind of people will never be my friends. Those who come around and start telling you who they are better than, no. Because they are the type who will fight anybody that rises. I, I'm not a product of all those kinds of things. There is enough, the assignment, the demand of the assignment is enough. You compete against the standard God has given you. There is a benchmark. Those who are men of God today were ushers in the Bible welfare personnel look at the condition to be in welfare full of the holy ghost welfare to serve food you needed to serve food with the anointing so we are constantly moving thank god for what god is doing through the school of ministry but we are rising thank god for what god is doing through our messages and the media ministry but we are rising the result is too small the result is not yet notable enough i tell you compared to where we are going this is child's play we've not started anything the level of excellence is still at its foundation foundation we have not even done anything that's how you challenge yourself don't sit down with your small business and come back with five thousand and you are laughing and say kai it's better than nothing be happy for where you are but never want to remain here oh what do you do i'm into interior decor are you see let me tell you something anything you are not competent in just keep quiet about it talking about it will be disgracing yourself there are so many people around ask them what do you do they say i'm into interior decor really like who like what how much can i pay you is there something you can do to me that will make me need you even if i don't like you you have a restaurant can we eat in your restaurant if we have a guest coming can we take the guest to your restaurant and be comfortable i have a church can i come to your church and sit down and be sure that god will bless me oh i'm a driver like who where do you know challenge yourself don't mark yourself and say i'm good there are many talented people inside and outside somebody wrote one song and came and sang it for me i said my brother please go and work on it god is helping you don't produce anything from this go and work on it it's obvious you i can show you at least five rules of music you broke on this i told them who is your role model who is your inspiration they say he mentioned expensive names as if it's just to talk i said how many of their videos do you have not their videos of the album they produce have you watched their stage rehearsals have you gone out of your way to find out how they rehearse?
listen you don't learn from a man by watching his real life performance you watch from a man by learning how he builds you don't learn from Usain Bolt by seeing how he runs no you see how he rehearses you don't learn from a man of God by just seeing how he displays the anointing you learn the mystery of his secret place Koinonia I'm challenging you God is taking us far there are many of us here who would have entered certain levels of influence opportunities came and passed us by is still passing us by because we have not mastered that key that will give us influence there are so many people in this place you are in business you are the only one who knows you're in business because your products you don't know nothing about business you will not sit down and learn you will not grow everybody will be what are you doing i'm into real estate what are you doing i'm a ceo ceo of nothing there's no result sit down and learn many young people moving around with suit and bible and, and ipad what are you i'm a pastor my name is pastor pastor david revelation or david king or something that's not what will give you open the doors of ministry let me tell you something god knows as a person i am more than willing to invest into the life of anybody that is serious and ready to rise up believe me anything you are doing if it's not of standard and you don't get standard by default you learn learn from the best don't learn from your colleagues your colleagues are your colleagues because something made you the same way you rise up you learn something you do not know is the reason why your life is limited something you know but have refused to believe is making you stay. God has given me access or common access to people and sometimes I look at where I am and it's like a dream I'm saying Joshua Selman what are you looking for in this place influence influence whenever you see a man of influence don't be angry it's not mistake results brothers and sisters I'm the firstborn in my family, but the way they are even treating me, I can't even talk. Result, result, result. Everybody say result. Produce result, and you will switch the button. I'm 20 years, I'm 30 years, they are still treating me like a child. Result. Prove them wrong. Produce results. Don't make noise. I'm obsessed about studying successful people. I'm not ashamed. I, I have an appetite to confront my ignorance. I confront it with joy and gladness. I confront my ignorance with, with no sense of embarrassment at all. I like knowing what I don't know anything about. When I discover things in my life, I say, ah, this is what I didn't know. I go for that knowledge. I want you to produce results. The little level God has brought this ministry it's as a result of the results the level of organization at the little level we are in there is a formula to it it's not just happening by mistake that you come and as many as we are there is still some level of organization you don't guess you learn what you see today is what we knew yesterday tomorrow will reveal what we have known today Please, I'm challenging you. We are going to pray. If you want to command influence, influence has monetary value. People will pay you and bless you in a way that will bring tears out of your eyes. And you will say, Lord, what, what is this? What are you doing to me? For if the cloud be full of rain, the Bible says they empty themselves upon the earth. Men of God, God is challenging us tonight stop being a mediocre surround yourself with three or four friends and say among all of them i'm the one who prays most that's nonsense mediocrity i'm the one who has revelation more mediocrity somebody writes jam and gets 120 and his friend gets 80 
and he turns and says Kai but I gap you by how many points let's count no I'm not I'm not mocking it's, it's not a mockery I'm using it as an example don't feel bad if you didn't make it for jam in fact I, I hear they are going to write it we we'll pray for them at the end of the service it's a challenge it's a challenge I know that this teaching is touching some of you there are people who are seated right now you can pretend like what I'm saying is not serious there are many people standing outside right to the back some of them are just standing and thinking about their lives I want to excel in my life and I want my excellence to be intentional set a high standard koinonia set a high standard challenge yourself when God gives you that influence men will thank you for being influential your children will thank you I was sharing with the school of ministry students some of the things I do today is no longer for myself if it's for myself I will stop doing some things because I've already created a system that will bless myself I've started thinking transgenerational both spiritual and physical not just physical children that anybody connected to me will be implicated for success just by being associated and Lot went with Abraham the secret place of Abraham implicated Lot until he was blessed who gets blessed following you or are you the type of parents who warn their children about and say don't follow this this bad boy he's going to spoil your life we're going to cry for divine direction many destinies are tied down now because of divine direction or lack of it Lord, what is the next phase of my life? You can't remain like this and just sit down. What is the next season? What is your blueprint? Lift your voice and pray. Show me, oh God. I buy into the mind of the Spirit. What is your communication for my ministry, for my life in this season? I don't want to be found where you were. I want to be found where you are. have an ear let him hear what the spirit is saying not what he said what he's saying what he's saying what he's saying he said the spirit speaketh expressly not the spirit spoke the spirit speaketh expressly direction okay listen listen let me talk to us a little especially i know that a generation of young people were very proud we just believe that just because we went to school we can determine the course of our lives with intelligence now destiny is not just academics and education you must cry part time per second for revelation this ministry by the grace of god we are where we are because not just because of the ability to hear God but the ability to stay until he says move tiredness can tell you to move weariness can tell you to move he said if your presence goeth not with us don't send us from here oh God we are not going do you know it is costly to go without God it's cheaper the pain of your waiting is cheaper than the pain of knowing that you are where God is not there are men of God that started well but people encourage you and say this is how they do it in ministry when you get to this level this is the next step and you foolishly took a step a step that ate away your destiny and your progress and your blessing hallelujah it matters that we understand times and seasons and that we can wait until God says move I remember after our second crusade in this ministry the next year we we're discussing and they say where are we going I went to the Lord and the Lord said you are not going anywhere and I said okay we're not going anywhere ah, but I thought we would do it every year mm -mm. be careful the ritual of religion can destroy you God used to do this way it doesn't mean he has to do it the same way the most important thing is let it be him doing it 
treasure of my heart and of my soul. In my weakness, you are merciful. Redeemer of my past and present wrong. You're the holder of my future days to come. Nothing in this world says Jesus, you're the calm that wound from dry. We live our lives being in a hurry is not the same thing as speed. God is a God of speed. I don't know why I'm preaching this now. This is part of the miracle service. God is the God of speed, but God is not the God of rush. There is a difference between speed and rush. Many of us, the Spirit of God is speaking to someone here. You need to calm down. The way you are running with your life, you are going to land in trouble. The way you are running with ministry, you will land in trouble. The way you are approaching marriage, the way you are approaching destiny, you will land in trouble. Culture and the sociological um, context of our living can mount pressure on us to run ourselves to the ditch. My soul wait thou upon the Lord. God is a God of speed. But until he speaks, you are on your own. It's amazing how you can be running for many years and find out that you are not moving. Running but not moving. And here comes a man, as weak as he is, but he can walk at the pace of God. And more can be achieved in one month with God than 10 years alone. Have you not learned the excellency of walking with God? He said, for with God, all things without god outside of god there are things that are not possible apostle my life i don't want to be a failure age is already um, not on my side i must make sure that i build a house now i must and god is saying calm down son you have handed your life over to me let me be lord of your life i say lord you don't know the pressure that is coming from my family let's be careful satan comes to attack us at the points of our vulnerability and hijacks us don't miss the series on friday we're rounding up the deliverance series are we together god is already speaking that's what leads many of us to this life of hustling putting your hand in everything and just rushing around and they say why well, say man must work all those nonsense cliches must get out of your life and your mind if god does not lead me i'm not going nowhere you may call me irresponsible, but let me die waiting. My soul waits down upon the Lord. It's now a foreign experience to many of us to wait. Gone are the days that people will say, I'm, I'm waiting. Now, people just think waiting is fasting from six to six. Waiting means waiting. The Bible says, except the Lord builds a house. Listen very carefully. It says, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city. Man of God, listen, businessman. It says, it says the watchman watched but in vain. And my Bible says, it is vain to wake up early in the morning and then to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow. Only to eat the bread of sorrow. I'm speaking to someone be tired of the bread of sorrow the bread of sorrow does not feel the bible says he gives his beloved sleep there are many pastors that just get up and feel anointed and just want rent one small auditorium and punish themselves punish their wives punish the few people that believe in them because they think ministry is just about opening a place and then we have the gods to tell people come it's not that way Paul, a man approved of God. Jesus, a man approved of God. Is God speaking to us? We need to have results in our lives. We are still praying. But you see, God is not a herbalist. Now, there are systems. There is a way that he works. 
and one of the way that he walks is to direct men and thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying this is the way walk ye in it walk ye in it and you will find rest for your souls are you are you hearing what i'm saying now it matters god is interjecting this miracle service to just minister to someone and say you are you are hurrying up too much you think it's breakthrough you are running you will soon find out that you've been around the same jungle for someone after this service you need to go and calm down with your life and say i've been running since 2005 what have i done with my life absolutely nothing oh come lord jesus come and direct me give me direction are we together the race is not to the swift and the battle is not to the strong not even bread for them that are wise when a man subscribe to the direction of god your life may look controversial for a while but all that will be before you is beauty and glory then your life will become beulah and hefzibah the delight of the nations the excellency of waiting the hardest thing for a believer to do is to wait it's easy to rush it's easy to do a lot of things you will make more mistakes in your life rushing there is power in waiting are we together there is power in waiting we're going to pray for the sick now there's a lot to do tonight but listen very carefully if this message is for you then i want you to receive it from the depth of your heart you know when we come like this there are various things that the lord is doing to several people not everyone is sick not everyone is oppressed but a word can come and god says be careful there are people about to relocate now to regions they've not sought god they just assumed let me tell you something brothers and sisters there is no place on earth called greener pastures greener pastures is a spiritual location is where the voice of god for you is god is already helping someone how many nigerians smuggled their way through the desert trying to get to lands because they believe the only difference between your locality and any locality in the world is a greater propensity to discern appreciate and reward value that's all they have a greater propensity to discern to appreciate and to reward value you can be where you are if you are truly directed by god and he will come to you and bless you are we together now how many of you are trusting the lord to touch you or touch your loved ones we're going to do it very fast because the second session of this prayer i want to settle down and really really pray seriously and just dismantle a number of things in our lives the grand finale will be on friday but then you are here we're going to pray for the sick now i promise that we'll do that very early so that we can finish and then attend to other issues now you may not be sick listen carefully but if you are a man of god is an opportunity to watch lord what are you doing how does this thing work what can i learn you must remain a student we're all students in the school of the spirit ever learning but in this case in that learning coming to the knowledge of the truth are we together you are trusting god for a healing miracle if you are in overflow one now hold on i want to specifically minister to barren people myself so if you have any case of barrenness whether you are in overflow one two or three please i want to minister to you myself please make your way very quickly and come stand you're trusting god for a miracle let's do it very very fast there is a lot to do very fast the worship team will lead us and just charge the atmosphere for us while we do this very fast and then at the same time to save time at the same time your your requests your prayer requests if you're here and you're you're yet to write your prayer request go ahead you can spare a few minutes to just write it now please listen listen very carefully except whoever is laying hands on you maybe ask you or prophesize to you or does whatever you just once they touch you just go back to your seat some of you 
I notice they touch you and you move to the other side of the line and still stand. It's unbelief. Praise the Lord. Or you are saying, okay, you don't know my problem. It's here and you are touching here. The Lord is showing me something about this woman. You don't have fallopian tubes at all. Oh my God. They've removed it. Your husband got another wife. Creator of the universe, what can you do? What can you do? and sisters let me tell you something i'm not trying to embarrass this precious lady i don't know you i'm just seeing you for the first time i'm not a woman so i can't pretend to say i know what is happening here but for a woman to not have fallopian tubes all removed and now it has scattered your marriage let me ask you a question and i'm asking it boldly do you believe that god can give you new fallopian tubes Where are you coming from? Madam, let me tell you, there is a God that sits in heaven. God is not a herbalist. He's a miracle worker. Put your hand in your stomach. Look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you. In the name of Jesus. Father, that's all right. I decree and declare brand new fallopian tubes. The God that doeth wonders. Brand new fallopian tubes. I say it again. Brand new fallopian tubes. Madam, allow for some time and go and check yourself in the hospital. Give Jesus praise. Please help this woman. It's an elderly woman. Help her, help her social life. In the name of Jesus, Mama God is delivering you in Jesus' name. The Lord is showing me somebody. It's just so long. You, you will sing, you will go back to your singing. I just want to. I'm saying the someone, the power of God is going to come upon you here. You are here right now on the line. I want to prophesy to that person. I, I just saw a flash of light, a very strong anointing. Bring the person. The Lord is rolling away the reproach in your life. And the Lord is telling me he's breaking the power of witchcraft over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, I declare to you, not only will you or your brother be healed, I decree and declare salvation comes to your family now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please sing for us that song, Creator of the Universe. Creator of the Universe.
I'm looking at you in the realm of the spirit and I'm seeing fibroid. Is that true? How long? Seven years. Fibroid. Confirmed in the hospital. That devil is going to leave you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Do you have children, ma? I've not married. You are not married? Oh my God. Now you be God, Almighty God. Oh, 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 oh,
Lord. Everyone say after me in the name of Jesus. Please shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. I prophesy over the next half of this year. Hear the word of the Lord. Become for me seasons of signs and wonders. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Everyone. Make sure you are praying. Praise God. Seasons of signs and wonders. Seasons of signs and wonders. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Please let's be serious. Say in the name of Jesus. Every dimension of grace. Every dimension of the anointing. Required. For my next level of exploits. I receive it tonight in Jesus name. Open your mouth and please pray. lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen that's the next prayer point we prophesy everything that was lost Restore unto you the years that the canker worm, the caterpillar, and even the palmer worm has taken. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that everything that has left my life and destiny that should not have left. I call you back by prophecy. Lift your voice and pray. In the name of Jesus. Declare that you might just be justified. Declare.
in the name of Jesus Christ. Say it again, in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare over my loved ones. Hear the word of the Lord. This is your season of rising. Lift your voice and prophesy over your loved ones. Please believe what you are saying. Prophesy. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus. This is your season of rising. A new level, a new dimension in the spirit. says the Egyptians you see today he said you will see them for no more forever I like you in the next five minutes everything that has attempted to mock God in your life don't be afraid open your mouth and declare that under this atmosphere of the anointing of the spirit you are leaving my life and my family forever open your mouth and pray declare thou that ye might as be justified pray don't entertain unbelief Poverty, I cause failure. Pray, Jesus, cause the victory. Jesus, I decree and declare that my help comes from above. I decree and declare that my help comes from the Lord. And in this season, I prophesy to my destiny, a believer receive the help of God. Lift your voice and pray. Come for help.
listen let me tell you this was he praying many of us here all you need is the ministry of helpers are we together now the psalmist said i will lift up my eyes onto the hills do you know why he spoke about the hills because god used the strategy of the hill to protect the people every time there was war he would lead them up the hill and if they got there there would always be victory remember elijah when it, when there was time for any contest he would say go up the hill mount camel mount zion mount this and that and so he said i will lift up my eyes to the hills but he said no 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 where comments my help he said my help the, the hill is only a strategy the hill is not my source and then he says my help cometh that means just like faith help to cometh faith cometh help cometh your help can come from other places by divination and witchcraft a man can attract a system of attention but he will pay for it listen Ebenezer is a revelation of the hand of God that can help a man blessed is a man that finds help from God many people are suffering because there is no help life can be cheap when there is help believe me when I tell you this how much is the rent that the God of heaven cannot pay it how much is it what is the job issue with a single signature a man's life can change but i told you every man who helps you has relatives who are in need it takes a grace and anointing to compel them to leave those who they are connected by blood and come to help you this world is too wicked for any kind of kindness to happen by default i'd like you to cry father in this season i'm ready to receive of the ministry of destiny help us please open your mouth and cry be serious some of you are looking at me pray pray name of Jesus was he praying this prayer session is a very major part of tonight's miracle service and I want you to pray because people are receiving results we are still going to pray over the issue of help let me tell you the truth brothers and sisters you see this ministry by the grace of God is a product of the help of God my life as a person is a product of the help of God it is vain my Bible says to wake up early in the morning and then to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow he said for he giveth his beloved sleep there are men of God that need help there are anointed people that need help there are intelligent graduates that need help there are married men and women that need help 
the holy spirit is called a helper the mercy of god can create a platform for help i've taught you this we are going to pray if you don't pray it will not happen i want you to be tired of your current level financially you all god can step in and you have value you are packaged your value but there is no system of placing a demand you must cry to the heavens lift your voice and pray from the depth of your heart prophesy to the north prophesy to the south prophesy to the east prophesy to the west where is the raven that came and fed elijah at butchery my god arise for me as a helper Shaka Barakatos, Shaka Taka 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 when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, then we were like them that dream, and then said they among the hidden, the Lord hath done great things for us. He said the Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again the captivity of Zion, like the streams of the Negev. Lift your voice and labor in the place of prayer. Everything that is alive grows. I provoke growth in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are still praying over the issue of help. Listen, you are going to pray for your loved ones. I know this about Africa. If you rise alone, you will not remain there. <clears throat> in Africa as you rise you pray for your loved ones to rise too if you are the only successful person out of 15 people they will stretch you and drain you if Joseph and his brothers were also equally successful they will not persecute him but he was one out of many I saw the Sun the moon and 11 stars bowing to one person and the brother said no way and they walked him out my bible says that a man's enemies shall be the members of his own household sometimes it's not binding and casting lord show them mercy too so that as i'm rejoicing they will rejoice and leave me in peace are you ready to pray say in the name of jesus i provoke divine help over my loved ones i prophesy to them that in this season Receive the help of the Lord. Lift your voice and pray for your loved ones. Financial help. Spiritual help. Career help. Help, oh God. Shabakatos, Shabros kete barakatos shana magata. Hallelujah. Ezekiel thirty-seven, and he took me in the spirit of the Lord, and he took me to a valley, and the Bible says that valley was full of bones. And it says the bones were very dry. Bones don't dry up in one day. It means they have been there for a long time. We want to visit age-long situations that have refused to go. You were born and you met that problem. You have become an adult. You have met that. No, no, no. It must go. That it has stayed long does not mean it's valid. Say in the name of Jesus. Every dry bone in my life and in my family hear the word of the lord i decree and declare let life come to you now lift your voice and pray prophesy life your father lost his job since 1991 till today he has not gotten a job hear the word of the lord 
Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. All ministry, hear the word of the Lord. All business, hear the word of the Lord. All destiny, hear ye the word of the Lord. The Bible declares that where the word of the king is, there is power. Hallelujah. And he said, Son of man, what seest thou? He said, Son of man, prophesy to these bones. And say, O bones, share ye the word of the Lord. And all of that, he said, and as I prophesied, as I was commanded, there was a sound. And then a shaking. Notice that the bones began to look for themselves. Meaning they have the ability to restructure themselves. Kabbalah Kota Shikata. And then the bones were there, but there was no life. He says, Son of man, prophesy again to the four winds. And say, O wind, breathe upon this lane. And the wind came and breathed upon the bones, and there arose an exceeding great army. Listen, God is able, God is able to turn a man's captivity overnight. He said, Have you ever heard that a city gives birth in one day? But he said, as soon as Zion travails, we know that birth is nine months. But something can happen to the rod of Aaron and it can bud overnight with no root. I like you to say, Lord, let the supernatural work in my life in this season. Business at a supernatural rate. Ministry at a supernatural rate. If it is the Lord's doing, then it must be marvelous in my eyes. Lift your voice and pray. As soon as Zion travails, as soon as Zion travails, she shall put forth a son. As soon as Zion travails, pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The apostle said, I desired once again to come to you, but Satan hindered us. Your breakthrough desire to come to you, but Satan hindered it. Your helpers desire to come to you. Have you seen a situation, Jimmy, where someone is about to bless you but before you reach your helper your enemy got there before you and told them something that turned their minds against you he said the rod of the wicked will not fall upon the lot of the righteous lest they dip their hands in iniquity please i'd like you to be angry in your spirit and pray we are not here to waste time Brothers and sisters, this is how victory is legislated and established in the kingdom. Are we together? It says, do not be ignorant of the devices, the methodologies from the word stratomai, the methodology of Satan. There are methods. It said, do not let your good be evil spoken of. Have you seen that that's a method? That I call you and Satan makes me interpret it as sarcasm. I just call you to say how are you and he says so you are mocking me it's, it's important that your good is interpreted as good Jesus went to a city and they didn't receive him do you think they just they don't, please carry your healing rubbish and go how many men of God were sent by God to families to help them but the devil changed their perception over that grace said no 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 anything pastor they are all riffraffs they are beggars they are liars they are hungry people they just want my money it's a strategy someone wants to teach you something and help you say no this this guy don't no 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 I desired once again to come to you but Satan hindered us how many people today would have been helped by God are we together now you heard that they are applying jobs 
but the devil made you feel that just because there are people scamming people everywhere the job that was your own was a scam too and you sat down and said no way and today you are still employed we need to cry to God to help us know what is of God and what is not of God because many times they look the same is the spirit of discernment that will help you five people may be cheating you but the sixth person may be genuine and you can't you join anybody that comes and then you remain poor and broke forever there are families today you never talk about anything good sir they gave us a prayer no 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 that's how that useless prophet came and prophesied and collected my hundred thousand don't bring any man of god here whereas the person who god was sending was like elijah to the widow of zarephath the fact that there is evil does not mean the grace of god is insufficient please listen to me there are people today who have been ordained to be blessed to listen but satan has clouded their minds so that they are cynical about everything that is god are we together i remember a few years ago i went to a house to pray for them i was invited and i got to the house i usually don't go to people's houses to pray for them and i went to the house and uh, um i just saw the man the, the owner of the house the sarcasm and the look that he was looking at me here they come these hungry young men again i tried to greet him i even held wine for them so that there's no suspicion and that man from what i saw didn't have up to two months to live And I sat down, I was talking with the family and the man was just looking, you know, you know, all this, do, do and leave my house. Until by the mercies of God, God began to speak to him. At the end of it, it was him that escorted me out. He said, ah, ah, you are, you are, you know, my friend, collected my, I said, look at this man would have missed this miracle. Brothers and sisters, some of our loved ones, you know what I'm saying, are like that. Their blessings kept passing for the last 10 years. They organized a program near your house. And they say, no, 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 no. Once it is not you, it is not God. It's an error. What of business opportunities? Just because people have been scammed here, just because something came out and something happened, there, anything business, God forbid, don't even mention anything. Oh, sorry, yes. No, 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 no. Don't talk to me. And then you remain poor and broke and say, God, what is wrong? He told Joshua, be strong and of good courage in life it takes audacity to know when your opportunity comes 28 of genesis god came to jacob and jacob out of his fear and cynicism was not ready for that visitation the next verses would lead him to the house of laban where he learned by his pain by chapter 32 he was ready the bible says when god came again he held him he said whether you are not god i will hold you it's in your holding i will find out i won't let you go till you bless me he said what is your name he said jacob he said thou shalt no more be called jacob but israel for as a prince you have power with god and you have prevailed and he touched his tie and blessed him and the bible says then the sun arose and he called the name of the place peniel for he had met with god face to face i have seen god face to face and my life arose and the bible says then the sun arose because it is the breaking of the day that comes with joy for as long as it is night weeping endures are we together i want us to maximize these meetings let's not just come before god and fulfill the ritual and then share the grace and go back it's time for us to move the bible says how forcible are right words you are hearing something that is waking you up and challenging you are we together i know i took i think i took i don't know if it was a whole month or so to pray for destiny help us Hey, Jimmy, your life is stranded until a helper comes. I know this. There was a man who was so crippled he could not walk. And Jesus came to town. He heard about it but could not get there. But certain people came. Your helpers will insist till you are blessed. Listen, a helper is not a well-wisher. A well-wisher is just a sociological being with a sense of empathy. A helper is sent and ordained. His ministry continues till you rise. 
some men came to david in a cave called adulam and they vowed that we must make you king you are seeing a man who is already weak no result ah, when your helpers come to you it will look like a charm there will be no reason for them to remain they will call you have you gotten the job sir no sir ah after okay i'm going to abuja for you and you start saying i hope there's no string attached no 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 i only saw myself helping you in a dream are we together every destiny helper has those in need please hear me graduates hear me oh every space for a job has hundreds of thousands of others connected but when god decides to help you he said jacob have i loved jacob have i loved hallelujah jacob have i loved god changes the rules as if it's unfair to you Haba, there is such a dimension the helper of israel when you labor and labor and labor and labor you'll be lying to say you are giving god glory there are many testimonies that are just a product of carnality the way you suffered for that miracle is why you cannot give it when god places a demand greed has an explanation when you when you acquire by labor and suffering and hardship you can't give but if it's freely you received it freely you will give are we together your destiny is one helper away by the privilege of god's grace i've been privileged to be a destiny helper to many people and overnight they got jobs without interview just because i happen to know someone in a position of influence and i say sir please there is someone can you help me i say apostle if it's you that's it the same way someone too has spoken is the help of god we rise by his help your business will open up by his help everything you have is needed on earth but it takes god to connect you to a man who is unashamed about his need for your grace it is the help of god that brought us here brothers and sisters the help of god there are pastors that need the help of god you can blow balloon and put it around you can do everything and find out that the people come and say it's cold don't we take tea in this church and be sarcastic towards you yet somebody called by god to help you will stand in the rain and say i'm sent and i'm not going anywhere when last did you receive help in your life when last did you receive help please hear what i'm telling you do you know if you do things alone and by yourself you are not blessed even if you succeed in doing it help help that god arises for a man and say young men establish within 10 years but i have chosen promise that in one month i will do i will walk a walk in your life that if it were told you you would not believe hallelujah a few weeks ago someone called me he was he was he's planning on getting married and he went and collected the list just two or three weeks ago and the list was quite voluminous and it challenged him and he called me that he's trying to seek advice whether it's the will of god or not i told him i said no that that is a foolish that is a foolish concern are you seeing you labored with a lady to go and meet her parents just because of the enormity of the list you are now seeking whether it's the will of god going behind what is there to ask whether it's the will of god or not listen i know that it looks like it's just a joke but it's a serious issue how many people have gotten high blood pressure because there is no help no help ask the medical doctors they will tell you you buy a car alone you look for food alone you walk alone you seek counsel by yourself you advise yourself no helper you see people moving like cane all around nobody to help nobody to advise you their pastor pastor bolaji do you know sometimes pastor bolaji would call me 
and say man of god how is everything happening i hope here in the north there's nothing you know this and that you're fine everything and i say oh pastor you're a busy man why do you have to do this and he said we need to encourage ourselves and i said my god help 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 are you ready for god to really help you our message is by the grace of god are being spread on eagle's wings is by the spirit but is through the help of men 70 percent of the invitations where i go to somebody stands maybe in a church council to say bring this man of god i know see all these people from the north no 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 i know this one who knows you enough to speak for you at the gates because there are times you are not permitted to enter the chambers where your value is needed but it will take mordecai uh, mordecai mordecai is outside but mordecai needs to find favor with the king but it will take god using someone inside joseph is in the prison but destined for the throne a wine presser needs to split your case before the king one more time father listen listen whoever must rise up and be an instrument to shift me to the next level please send them to send them my way i want i i cry that you pray with all your heart men can be helped of god my help cometh from the lord they were many widows in zarafat they all needed help but to none was elijah sent except a widow in zarafat how about the rest there were many widows also needing help but god chooses to send a prophet to just one of them hallelujah the last prayer point and then we'll pray here the bible says according as his divine power please listen hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness to life i will never be the man of god who will teach you to live a defeated life at the expense of your spiritual growth no no there are matters that pertain to life there are matters that pertain to godliness his divine power covers them all so i can excel in the matters that pertain unto godliness and still excel in the matters that pertain unto life i should not serve god and tell my children to go and beg a neighbor for food he says since i was young now i am old i have not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed beg for bread you know many believers in their carnality and the depravity of wisdom they think that when you begin to focus about the matters of life it's a sign that you are becoming less spiritual i can tell you from experience that the pain that comes from the issues of life can make you ungodly are we together the ladies that go into prostitution do they go into prostitution with poor men the young men that join occults all these cult groups vibrant young people and the next thing you see they are in a devilish cult somewhere it's easy for us to criticize them but you will be surprised that it's from that occult they are feeding their families compassion is the ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity as a man of god i must be compassionate enough about your situation thank god for your spiritual life but i want you to do well that's what success means are we together i have food in my house right now but do you have food only a wicked man of god will enjoy and rise at the expense of the rising of others a true shepherd lays down his life doesn't climb on the ship some of you sow into my life i must teach you how others will also sow into your life it can't be all about me you are bringing seeds you are blessing me and i'm seeing the benefit of it to my spiritual life but how about you i came with a passion tonight if one person rises in a ministry alone is that a blessing no he called many sons to glory not a few 
there are many of you with business ideas there are many of you with ministries there are many of you desperately waiting for a job and men are beginning to say where is your god you are no longer young you have been praying and fasting and doing all of this if you cannot bring fruits that befit your work with god we will stop you from coming for koinonia or we will stop you from doing this and god wants to arise and prove himself mighty why won't you pray well when you eat well why won't you pray well when you the receipt of your children's school fees is being paid for i have the privilege by the mercies of god to support many families here and sometimes I, my eyes are full of tears after a powerful meeting and i see someone standing and say sir my children once upon a time two dear ladies here for five years a jimmy just to buy jam form beautiful wonderful godly ladies and that's exactly what satan wants after the prayer after falling under the anointing you get up and your needs remain and you sit in the night and say look can't i do something the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous lest they dip their hands in iniquity many of us have dipped our hands in iniquity simply because of the hunger that is in your belly was it not hunger that took israel to egypt talk to me was it prosperity that took them there no there was hunger in the land and israel had to go to egypt to look for food they went to egypt and stayed until they became slaves when they began to say it's time for our exodus pharaoh looked at them and said uh-huh you are beginning to find some level of convenience don't give them straw is because you are giving them straw that they have the time to even call upon the name of the lord leave them to find straw by themselves and they say moses don't go to pharaoh again every time you want to rise it's like a it's like a thermometer the devil tries to make sure that there is a harsh climate economically and otherwise i stand to tell you you can be of influence you can be prosperous and you can be spiritual jesus grew in wisdom in stature in favor with god and with men the lamb's wife is a balanced woman he said come and i will show you the lamb's wife he said and he showed me a city that was equal in length equal in breadth equal in depth any doctrine that does not preach that balance is not presenting the lamb's wife you are showing something else the lamb's wife is a balanced city the church of god must arise and help believers to do well in life this you see a lot of people prayer warriors torn trouser torn destiny you just see them move around you now go to say i want to marry you and the girl's father said if i ever see you near the corridor of my house he said but i praise i say so what we keep mocking the name of the lord there are many people do you know that the times that i've had counseling people a major reason why people backslide and leave god is that they get to a level in life now where the matters of life stand glaring before them and they are surprised that as spiritual as they are now the church started as a prayer meeting and you were doing well healing the sick now suddenly you have gotten to a size where you need rent and you just realize that per use is hundred thousand your prayer life just starts going down slowly all of a sudden you find out that your wife is pregnant and they say just bring something just to test and make sure she's fine say i don't have anything say well the god that we serve is a victorious god are we together many of you have the hearts to support the kingdom but the means is not there listen to me listen to me for as long as you are not empowered you will remain a slave in life i give you a guarantee for as long as you are not empowered you will remain a slave the anointing comes upon you but alongside the anointing is capacity for influence it took a man of influence called joseph of arimathea to get jesus from the cross it was not a prayer warrior that brought jesus from the cross a prayer warrior supervised his birth but a wealthy man supervised his resurrection we're a ministry of prayer we're a ministry that fasts we're a ministry of the word but we must be a ministry with results that are all around 
and Abraham was old and well stricken in age and the Lord had blessed him in all things not some things the last prayer point like Naaman you may be the captain of a great army the Bible says he conquered valiantly but he was crippled the one or two areas in your life I'm giving you a personal time of supplication now one or two areas in your life that must balance this equation to present Christ well let's cry together and say God you have done well in this area and I thank you but Lord I cry that in this area may your glory be represented in my life please lift your voice and pray please pray in my life keep praying be glorified be glorified cry to the lord your hands over the prayer requests and let's begin to pray this is a representation of our pain it's a representation of our needs just cry to the Lord my God and my King the one who heareth them that call upon you arise in your majesty and turn these requests into testimonies it is unto you that answers prayer that we have come and Lord in the name that is above all names we provoke your integrity over these issues 
lord there are issues here that only god can solve some of the issues represented here are life and death issues we will search for you and we will find you we will find you with all our hearts we will lift our hands to you in worship and we will worship with all my heart lord i will search for you and i will find you i will find you with all my heart and i will lift my voice to you in worship i will worship you are god from beginning to the end there's no place for argument you are God all by yourself. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. I speak over this request in the name of the Lord God of heaven like he has done it before may every request here before god be turned now into supernatural testimonies may god turn every situation here to supernatural testimonies in the name of jesus christ just give me two three minutes and we're done. I want to speak over your life now. When you hold my hands, everything becomes possible. When you hold my hands, everything, everything becomes possible. above all names I decree and declare over your life let a new dimension of testimonies come upon you in like a mighty rushing wave in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare everything that represents shame and reproach in your life I cry to the God of heaven to roll it away like smoke before the wind in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for every man of God represented here fresh fire upon your altar fresh fire upon your altar in the name of Jesus Christ every issue of concern in your career in your business and in your life I send the word of God like a messenger to reproduce the garden of Eden over your issue in the name of Jesus Christ when a man's ways pleases the Lord he make it even his enemy to be at peace with him I declare whoever must be at peace must be at peace with you to rise I command peace to happen between you master we have toiled all night he said nevertheless at thy word i want to prophesy to you where you failed before go back again with an anointing go back
walk with the grace that makes men succeed. In the name of Jesus Christ. And the Lord visited Sarah. And she called the name of her son Isaac. He said, all those who hear about this will laugh with me. I introduce you to a new season of laughter. 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 Turn again our captivities like the streams of the naked. I pray for you. It will be like a dream of the night. The way God will turn your life around. Anyone here under the plague of death, any family represented here that the devil has vowed that they will not see the end of the year together in joy. I decree, O oh death, where is thy sting? And O oh grave, where is thy victory? I command death to pass from over you in the name of Jesus. He said, let the people praise me and then the earth shall yield. Every ground can yield. I command your ground to produce for you. Daniel chapter 2 and when you read from verse 28 downwards he said but there is a God that revealed secrets I pray for you the secret the mystery that you need to hold on to in this season that will shift you to a new level the kingdom truth the revelation of the spirit because the light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not the truth you need to lay your hands upon may my God open your eyes to see it and the Bible says that you shall be called all nations shall call you blessed and you shall be called a delightsome land it's called Beulah and Hephzibah a land that is desirable and Isaac looked at his sons and said the smell of my son is like the field that the Lord has blessed I decree and declare may the fragrance of heaven that calls for favor to men may it come upon your life now in the name of Jesus Christ it says thou causes men to ride over our heads we walk through fire and through water, but thou brought us into a wealthy place. I decree and declare, help even in the area of finances, may it arise for you. I say it again, help even in the area of finances, may it arise for you. Finally, I pray for every family represented here. And that includes those connecting with us online. It doesn't matter what part of the world you are following from in the name that is above all names the lord has made a, declare, a declaration that this is our year of signs a sign and a wonder is a miracle with a message on it therefore i decree and declare may your life from tonight become an epistle of signs and wonders i say it again may your life from tonight become an epistle of signs and wonders in the name of Jesus wave your hands and give Jesus praise thank you Jesus <laughs> hallelujah Paradventure, adventure you are here in this place tonight everyone please listen please no moving around let's honor the name of the Lord you are here you have seen what the Lord has done you've heard me teach and the Holy Spirit began to convict you to tell you that the time had come for you to make Jesus Lord of your life and to take him seriously I want to give you that opportunity right now there are people here saying apostle I've heard about God I've been around the things of God I've been around church I have a Christian name my father may even be a man of God my mother is an intercessor but I I declare my need for God tonight and then there are others here who are saying apostle I have given my life to Christ but at one point or the other I just found my life going haywire and I'm saying I need Jesus if you belong to any of these categories I like you to make a bold step overflow one overflow two the main auditorium you can walk and come out here and then overflow three you can go 
in front of your projector stand if you are there please make your way quickly let's honor them as they come the holy spirit is convicting someone don't wait for someone to come be the first god bless you koinonia are you appreciating them in the name of jesus christ there has to be someone making a decision for jesus god bless you god bless you keep clapping as they come win that war tonight win that war god bless you as you come it says he that cometh to him he will in no wise cast away make your way make your way to this front god bless you keep coming we have one minute for you if you're coming from outside please double up your steps very quickly very quickly say call for total surrender lord you gave me your life i'm giving you mine right now are there people still coming make your way very quickly Apostle, I'm not sure if I'm born again or not. I've been around the things of God, but I'm not exactly sure. Join them. Join them quickly. When the Titanic sank, there were only two names. Those who were lost and those who were saved. No in-betweens. Make your way quickly. Hallelujah. I salute every one of you. If you are joining them, please join them very quickly. Overflow 3, you can move to the front of your projector those online giving their hearts to jesus just follow and pray along with us by faith in the name of jesus now i want you to lift your right hand sincerely you're not reciting a poem you are speaking to the lord and he's here listening to you say after me lord jesus say it again say lord jesus i believe in you that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me I believe that you shed your blood for me I believe that you were raised up for my justification tonight I hand over my life to you and I receive your life in return I declare that the power of sin the power of the flesh the power of Satan is broken over my life I declare that I'm a child of God I am saved the grace to walk in victory, to walk in liberty, is mine now, in Jesus' name. Keep your hands lifted. Jesus, I present to you the ones you died for. We thank you for bringing these ones out. No man can come to the Father except you draw them. Lord Jesus, I pray that the grace that keeps men in this kingdom, let it be supplied your people right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare over your life and I decree that you are going forward ever and backward never. In the name of Jesus Christ, every challenge you came here with, as a result of this new life, let new victories come for you. In Jesus' name I pray. A big congratulations to you. Thank you so much. Now, I want you to follow someone waving his hands. There's a gentleman waving his hands there. Can I see who is waving his hands now? Please, very quickly, I'd like you to follow him. All of you in concert, just follow the gentleman. There will be a group of people to just meet with you very quickly and very briefly. Let's honor them. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you